Hi, my name is Ganesh Tekate. I'm the director of product marketing for the video interface products. What we are demonstrating here is our latest generation DisplayPort 2.1 multi-stream hub. So what you see in this product here, this is our reference design, a docking station reference design, which is featuring our um, Carrera chip which is the code name is VMM 9430. This has got one USB-C front end facing port and it's got four video output ports. So there are two of them are display port full size connectors, one USB type C and other one is the HDMI 2.1. So this product is capable of supporting up to 80 gig of throughput through the upstream facing port. It can drive quad 4K 120 or dual 8K 60 or even a 10K or 16K wider display for supporting the modern displays. Is this the most advanced dock? This is the most advanced dock in the industry. We are the first one to bring this DisplayPort 2.1 based product into the industry. So uh, 2.1 has the very high bitrate standards, right? Exactly. So it's 80, support... 80 gig data rate um, coming from the CPU to the dock. So that is like, on top of that, it's got a three to one compression, DSC compression we support. So you can literally go for 240 gigabits per second, which is way more bandwidth required for next several generation of docking stations. You could do multiple 10K. It, we can do multiple 10Ks. If the CPU supports that, we can support all that. Typ and today, there is some limitation from the graphics, CPUs and GPUs, for example, the Intel latest generation can support only up to four streams of the, uh, or the DP 2.1 link. So that kind of limits how many number of displays you can drive. Can you configure how many HDMI or DP you want? So all of these ports can be configurable as an HDMI, but currently like in this reference design, we are showing two display port, one Type-C and one HDMI 2.1. So all our display port outputs are DP++, that means it can drive either the display port monitor or HDMI 2.1 monitor. And uh, if you choose one or the other, full functionality? It's full functionality, including the HDR10, Dolby Vision, or even the gaming features like the VRR, QMS, QFT, all that feature we support in our product. Is there a huge power consumption to have all this? Absolutely not. Um, we are make use of our lowest process geometry in this chip. We were able to bring down the overall power by 30% compared to our previous generation as well as compared to any competitive products in the market. So it's not going to burn? It's not going to It's not going to burn. So the maximum power consumption is in the range of 1.5 watt to 1.8 watt range. That's when you are displaying or driving like 4, 4K, 120 hertz. If you are not driving full 120 hertz, the power will come down further down. Can it detect if the cables support the 2.1? Um, typically, like a lot of the cables are passive cables, you cannot detect that. But if there is an active cable, we can detect that information as well. We can detect all the monitor information, what data rate is uh, going on, what the resolution, what is the refresh rate, EDID information, all that we collect. That is used as an asset information for the IT manager to find out what type of displays have been connected to this stuff. Could you run a huge digital signage with this? Uh, absolutely. You can do like quad 4Ks or uh, even dual 8K type of displays using signage. You Could be the whole wall. I mean, the whole wall is possible, but only thing is like you need to take the portion of the video and then scale it in the display itself. But it's possible. It is. is there any upscaling happening on this? Uh, there's no scaling taking place in this, uh, but it's uh, basically the, we convey the display information to the source and the CPU will generate, render that at the same resolution of the displays. All we do here is like, uh, branching that, taking a multi-stream, separating that into drive multiple displays. If there's a DSC, we can decode that and then drive the displays, or you can do the DSC pass through all that. And if you do a DP or HDMI 2.1 spec, uh, is it the same chip that does both? A absolutely. So all our ports are configurable for either driving the DP 2.1, HBR10, HBR20, 13.5, all the date rate. On top of that, if somebody wants to drive a HDMI 2.1 displays, we can support all the link rates which HDMI 2.1 supports, 8 gig, 10 gig, 12 gig, FRL, 3 lanes, 4 lanes, all that we support. And the sound systems, um, the sound bars and everything? So typically, like, our chip doesn't support a separate audio out. The audio is sent out over the HDMI or display port, and the receiving sync has to remove the audio out of that and drive the separate speakers. And there's no lag? Because people uh, there is no, absolutely like to do no lag and that, stuff? That's the advantage of the display port. There's no GPU 
to the display. There is no lag of information, lag of the video because we don't have any frame buffer. We are only have a partial line buffer. The maximum lag you can see is a half a line, which is which is nothing when you compare to a, a 60 hertz 4K image, which is like in a microseconds. Is it mass production? Is it? It's uh, already in mass production. The good news is that we already been designed into all three major PC OEMs. So you'll see the docs uh, based on this chip releasing into the market early next year. Could you connect a one type C that does all that stuff? Absolutely. So it's a one type C. And the beauty of this is it can work with Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5, or USB 4, any type of CPUs um, in the market. We have a broad compatibility with Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, NVIDIA. So we do a lot of the testing, interoperative testing. Also, this product is being certified by VESA as well as NDMI R. And uh, the USB spec, when you do Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4, what's the difference? I mean, the USB, what we support on the upstream is USB 3. Um, so we can, um, I, in fact, like the USB 3 coming over the Type-C is separately being routed into the USB hub. All we do is taking the, the video coming over the USB-C and then we convert that into drive any of the display port or DMI 2.1. Do you do very high charging at the same time? Uh, the charging is outside our chip. Our chip is mainly focusing on the audio and video portion of the... Uh, but the dock could potentially dock, do the dock, 240... Any, any dock which has been using our chip today is being supporting the PD charging. Um, At the support, maximum speed? Yes, the ex extended power charging 240 is becoming very common in the enterprise dock. A lot of the our OEM products are supporting 240 watts charging today. You want to make sure that the power doesn't interfere with all the video stuff, right? Absolutely not. So that's been kind of solved problem in the industry. Power is not going to be interfering. So we have a protection on all of our um, input lanes, the receiver lanes, so that it's uh, highly protected against any um, uh, discharging or anything from the connector. It's very important to have a good cable. And do you check the Type-C cable or that's also a passive? I mean, we, we, we have a built-in equalization feature and also we do an adaptive equalization. We can calculate what is the loss budget in the cable. Even if the poor quality cable, we can fully recover the eye of that service and get you the very good in, uh, display uh, through this product. I would like to show you one of the advanced feature what we have integrated in this chip, which is called the on-screen display. So as the modern docs are becoming an IoT doc, the IT managers and um, other corporate apps, they would like to use this doc to communicate certain information or do some asset management and all that. So we have a built-in OSD features, which basically um, displays um, display information. It's related, to, uh, what you can see here is the, the all the configuration data is being displayed here, but you can make use of this to kind of create your own on-screen display for user messaging. For example, if IT wants to broadcast certain corporate messages, you can make use of that. It can be that. nice graphics? Ab absolutely. We can do some good-looking graphics, a BMP images or a text images we can do on that. And it could potentially integrate with all this uh, Hey Google and everything and the Siri. I mean, that, and the that's the next uh, stage, potentially. but potentially it can be. So as you see today, TVs have a lot of this interactive OSDs. In, eventually, we can bring such similar level of OSD experience in the docs as well. Thank you.